Oh my god, hey! Oh, these? Oh, they're just a fun topical reference to today's review. Don't worry, I don't actually need them because I'm still living in the UK where I haven't seen the sun for some weeks now. Literally, it's freezing all the time. Is the sun still there? Is it still there? Tell me in the comments if the sun's still there. In any case, welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. I am a professional theater critic, I am a stagey YouTuber, and I am here to bring you my reviews. Today we are going to be talking about Shirley Valentine, this production, a revival of the iconic Willie Russell play starring National Treasure Sheridan Smith, has just opened at the Duke of York's Theatre. I was invited to go to a press performance, I went to the first of a few that they had, uh, rather than having one opening night, and my review has been under embargo until now. It has lifted, and finally I can share my thoughts with you all. So today, I'm going to be finally letting you know what I thought of Sheridan Smith and this production. But before I do, if you enjoy today's video, then there's a few things you can do about that. You can make sure you're following me here on YouTube by subscribing to my stagey YouTube channel. I post new reviews all the time, I'm seeing a bunch of new openings over the next few weeks, and then I'm going to New York to go and review as many Broadway shows as I can fit into my stay there. So it's a great time to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you want to gain access to my exclusive content, click on the link in the description. You can join as one of my YouTube members for just £2.99 a month. They already know what I thought of Shirley Valentine because my first impressions video already told them. And the other link in the description is for you to sign up to ShowScore. This is a site where you can make your own account for free. You can rate the shows that you have seen in London or New York and say a little bit about them. And you can also read all of my written reviews on there as well. Now, let's talk about Shirley Valentine. So I mentioned before that this is an iconic play by Willie Russell. Musical theatre people, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, why do I know the name Willie Russell? It's because Willie Russell also wrote Blood Brothers um, and perhaps best known for Shirley Valentine, also wrote the play Educating Rita. So Shirley Valentine, which has also been adapted for film, is about the emancipation of a Liverpudlian housewife, a very working class, downtrodden Liverpudlian housewife named Shirley. And the whole show is an extended monologue that takes place over two acts. She is by herself on stage, she is literally talking to the wall, and then in the second act it evolves a little bit. By the end of today's review I'm probably going to have given you a fairly hefty spoiler about where the second act takes us. But to be honest, the show's entire plot and trajectory has become so synonymous with its name, I feel like everyone in the UK at least already knows what this play is about. So, is it a spoiler? I don't know. You know what, the artwork itself is kind of a spoiler, because this right here is not taking place in her kitchen. Unless her washing machine exploded, in which case I don't think she'd look this happy about it. In any case, it's a very well-known play, being revived with Sheridan Smith, who is such a great fit for this role. It kind of makes you feel like she might have already played it before, but she hasn't. She's playing this part for the first time. What did I think of her and the show? Let's find out. So I'm going to be giving this a four-star review today. I think Sheridan Smith's performance in it is extraordinary and wonderful and charismatic. There's a couple of little notes within it that I think could go a little bit further and could be sort of changed slightly. But broadly, I think what we're seeing here is a really great piece of casting and a really charismatic performance that made sense completely from when it was announced and was always going to be a slam dunk from that perspective and I think it made so much sense and the writing was so strong and the writing really holds up and you watch this and you think oh my gosh this writing is still so great and it reminds you how talented Willie Russell is and how talented Sheridan Smith is and I think the temptation has been to take a great actress and great material and just put it on stage and think you know what it doesn't need anything else and sometimes when a creative team and a producer says that they're correct and they know when to step away. In this instance, I feel like it needed a little bit more, just a little bit of embellishment, a little more theatricality. I'm going to explain what I mean by all of that. But essentially, I feel as though Sheridan Smith was abandoned on stage to contend with this material with relatively little creative support. That's a big claim. I'm going to defend it. <laughs> So 
So let's start with the positive. Let's talk about her performance. She's wonderful in this. I mean, she's so down to earth and charismatic and endearing. My favorite thing that she does actually is because Shirley is constantly telling stories about her children growing up or about other people that she's encountered in town or stories about her own life. And through that, she portrays these other characters and she does these impressions of other characters. And not only are the accents so completely on point, but her characterization, every single person that she depicts is recognizable and different, but not a caricature. They're all real people. And the Shirley that she's crafted is a real person. For what it's worth, the bits I enjoy the most are when she's playing the other people rather than when she's being Shirley. I understand who Shirley is and it's a layered, developed human being. There's just a couple parts of her characterization that don't necessarily resonate completely with the text. What I mean by that is she's meant to be this afflicted, downtrodden, slightly morose housewife. And she's making the best of this situation and she's telling jokes and we see that she's not really content with her lot in life now that her children have moved out, now that she's in this relationship where she's not really being appreciated, where there's just a lot of expectations. And she's essentially just unfulfilled and she's not living her life to its fullest despite only being in her early 40s. And through all of this, she puts on a brave face. And I feel like the brave face Sheridan Smith puts on is almost too positive and she puts too happy a spin on everything so we don't really feel how low she is in that first act to appreciate the contrast in the second. So let me tell you what happens in the second act. In the second act, she goes on holiday with a friend to Greece to go and take some time for herself and soak up all the life that she's been missing. She'd been invited or she told us she'd been invited in the first act, but she wasn't planning to go. And then the events that take place between the two halves of the first act when we have a little bit of a time jump convince her that she actually is going to go, even if just to spite her husband. But we ought to feel this real contrast in her character and she does feel lighter in the second act and she feels more carefree, but I don't know that she feels that much more positive because she was giving us this very sunny outlook on everything in the first act. She does this thing where she's really funny and when she lands a really great joke, she'll smile to the audience and she has this twinkle of recognition in her eye because you get this familiarity between her and the audience and you feel a connection with her, which is good, which is important. But that twinkle is present throughout her performance and it's that kind of thing that just makes her seem a little too bright and chipper throughout. Don't get me wrong, she has some lovely, really well played, low, contemplative, melancholy moments, but it's the underlying positivity throughout the first act that really undermines the contrast between the two. And so the whole thing starts to feel a little bit samey because broadly she's in the same place for most of it. The mood doesn't shift all that much. It's really funny and it's really engaging and she's such a fantastic storyteller, but you start to feel as though you're just catching up over coffee with this really dynamic and exciting friend. And that's because some of the creative elements and some of the production don't do as much as they could to theatricalize the story. Let me tell you more about what I mean. So when I say we've just taken this great actress and put her on stage and given her this script, I really do mean that. I feel as though she's been directed by Matthew Dunster and he has her moving about and he has her cooking on stage, which is the iconic thing with this play. She's making chips, she's making eggs, she's taking the bins out, she's pouring herself a glass of wine, she's all over the place. In the second act, she's comparatively more still, although she's slowly setting up a table and, and adjusting a towel on the floor. And we need that business because there is a danger that it will get too monotonous because she's just talking to the audience. There are very few one-person, two-act plays. Normally, if it's going to be a one-person show, it's not going to be that long. So to hold us for that amount of time to tell as many stories as she does, we need more stuff to be going on. One of the creative issues I had with this show was the design. Both the costuming and the set design of the first act I struggled with because she's she's looking very cute in this sort of pastel outfit 
in this lovely pastel kitchen and her life looks idyllic and lovely. It doesn't look like she's hugely wealthy. It looks like she's from a working class background, but it's one of the cleanest, dreamiest working class Liverpudlian kitchens that I think they could have depicted. The whole thing looks quite charmed and that's not really the sense that we ought to be getting. They also do this thing where the kitchen has two walls. There is a back wall and there is a side wall and there's a gap between them. And just subconsciously, this gives the sense of a space being broken open. I don't know if they were hoping for the idea of it coming apart, but it just feels too open and it ought to feel like a claustrophobic space that's closing in on her. She should feel trapped. This kitchen is her domestic prison. And we don't get that sense. We really don't. The lighting is too bright. The whole thing is too open and too spacious. And you don't feel the urge for her to leave. You don't want for her to break out of this space into a comparatively more open stage. It is more open a little bit in the second act, but that set has its issues as well. So once we get to the second act, she's in Greece. There's a blue wall. There's a yellow floor. There's a table. There's a rock. Just this really big rock. And it doesn't feel idyllic. It doesn't feel like this paradise that you want it to. There's a couple of things I think would help with this because it's not only set, but it's also lighting. It's also sound. If we could hear birds, if we could hear the sound of the waves, it would help transport us there. She's doing all of this storytelling by herself and there's very little creative support to help transport the audience, even in some of the moments in the second act. So there's points where she's describing these scenes that take place by twilight. Now it's tricky because Shirley in real time is in the daylight when she's telling us what has happened. But in the stories she's recalling, it's twilight, it's evening. And I wish the lighting adjusted to reflect that as she fades more into the story. I wish there was more of a sense of theatricality where things were adjusting to reflect the world as she is describing it and we are transported with her. It wouldn't be incredibly realistic because that's not the actual time of day it is then. But the idea is we ought to be so immersed in her story that we will be transported with her rather than her describing the setting sun while it's just blindingly bright on the stage behind her. She describes swimming in the sea. I wish she was bathed in some sort of a blue light. I wish we heard the sound of the waves. And so as she's describing it, she can almost feel it. And we see that and we can feel it as an audience as well. I just feel like to neglect that puts too much pressure on her. Like I said, she's a fantastic storyteller, but there's no reason that we ought not to use all of the other creative tools at our disposal to help transport the audience. It comes back to what I was saying about just thinking that her performance and the script is going to be enough, but there are little embellishments, even a little bit of musical underscoring, something in the first act, something in the second to make it more dreamlike and Grecian and just to give us that sense of location and atmosphere. She describes being in a restaurant, if we heard some background chatter, just the slightest thing, stuff that you'd barely even notice, but just helps to create a sense of atmosphere. Because it's a symptom of the duration of the show that I did find myself drifting out of it occasionally. It's nothing about the text, it's nothing about her performance, but it's very difficult to keep an audience gripped when something is as visually monotonous as it is, and when the emotional places it's taking you to are following a sort of a repeated pattern. You know, she's joyous, she's uplifted, and then she feels guilt about it, and then she feels low, and then she questions why she's feeling like that, and then she, you know, gets her spirit back. And as we move up and down this emotional spectrum, we hit the same few beats, and that's why it starts to feel a little bit repetitive. I feel like there are subtler notes that Sheridan and Matthew, the director, together could have found in this piece. I do think it's a remarkable performance. I do think it's incredibly well suited to her talents. And I think ultimately the audiences going to this play are going to get everything they want out of it. I just know that she is a formidably good actress and is capable of even more than is on display here. I think a wonderful performance, but I know that she has such utter perfection at her fingertips.
If you're a fan of Sheridan Smith's at all, it's a brilliant showcase of her skill set here. I think she's at her best when she's doing dramatic shows. I love her in musicals as well, but she's an incredibly good dramatic actress, as we've seen in a lot of her TV work over the past few years. My favourite performance she's ever given was at The Old Vic. She played Hedda Gabler in the Ibsen play, Hedda Gabler, like a decade ago, and she was devastatingly good in that. I think there's a particular generation who are really going to relate to this play, and I think it plays really well now as well, and I think it speaks to this zest for life that everyone is seeking after the lockdown, the pandemic robbed us all of so much time, and I think particularly maybe a lot of women in their 40s would really relate to this play and the journey that she has. And you know, this is a character who was written to be 42. Sheridan is 42 at the time of playing this role. And I think 42 looks and feels different to how we perceived 42 when this play was originally staged. And I think that's to its benefit as well. I think people of that age are less readily written off as an older generation. And, and we come to understand that she still has so much living to do, and she's still a woman with dreams and ambitions and sexual desires, and she can act on all of those things and claim it for herself. But those have been my thoughts about Shirley Valentine at the Duke of York's theatre. Like I said, fantastic performance, a few areas where I thought it could have been even more improved, but I do think the fans of this show, who know what to expect, and fans of Sheridan Smith's are still going to find so much to love about this production. And she is wonderful in it. She gets so many laughs in this material as well. And it's that kind of laughter where just every few moments she's really funny. It doesn't necessarily build to these giant laughs consistently. That happens a few times, but it's more that just she's charmingly funny throughout. And so you're constantly smiling rather than being taken by surprise with a joke. And also, let's remember, she has an awful lot to do in this play. It's so many pages of dialogue. She is cooking on stage. She's she's doing all sorts. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more videos, including more reviews, coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a Stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>